Trashomaniacs. Gearheads. Well, welcome to episode 306 of the Geo Gearheads. I am Chris of the Northwest with our illustrious host, Daryl W4. And this is an exciting episode. In fact, it may get you charged up to go out and do some shocking geocaching. Yeah, you know, we're, I'm going to ignore all those bad puns and move right into the winner of that Captain Rodney's uh, trackable tag. And I'm going to try to say this, but I'm going to butcher it. Lanky, I think, is how it's pronounced. But he was nice enough to send in his pronunciation. Lanky. So I'm... Lanky. Yeah. I, I'm having issues saying that, but I apologize for butchering it. And that's how it was correctly said. So thanks for uh, entering the uh, contest. And we will have more of them coming up for... Uh, uh, next week, so I would probably suggest, since it's a trackable show, you know, maybe send in your uh, questions and comments, and uh, you know, there, there might be another one of these uh, Captain Rodney's tags going out to one of the lucky listeners. And and by the way, he is not in the U.S. What? Wait, this is a contest open for more than just Americans? Yes. Can Canadian, no, not Canadians. We're going to exclude the Canadians. No, we'll, we'll let them in. Oh, you've got to. Other, otherwise, we're going to be, you know, we're going to hear about it from the land monkey. Yes, there you go. <laughs> uh, no, Daryl, that's very nice that uh, you're willing to email, email these, mail these out to uh, cashers all around the world. So no matter where you're listening to this podcast from, go ahead and get your uh, tips into where are we going to send it? Geogearheads Geo at cashamaniacs.com. Yep. That's geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com. Order now. But wait, <laughs> what else do you get? But wait, there's more. So, yeah, next week we want to kind of try to uh, focus on the uh, uh, collections feature because a lot of people have trouble with that. And that's a nice uh, feature to have. And then the discovery and moving around that kind of stuff. That's uh, something that does tend to confuse a lot of people. So, yes. if you have any questions specifically about those, definitely send that in. But anything about uh, trackables in general is a uh, fair game because, you know, it's a trackable show. Oh, is the show itself trackable? Uh, well, if you watch the video, I do have a tracking number in the show. <laughs> and this, uh, this week, it's a gift coin. The, the last three characters just, are. You know, like a closed, uh, a, a, what do I want to say? A shuttered toy store? Yeah. Except that it's not actually an O. Oh. Because there are no O's in uh, trackables. Oh. 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 By the way, Limax wants to know what the uh, email address is again. That's geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com. Write this down, geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com. We'll repeat it seven more times for your convenience. <laughs> or, or better yet, just put it in your uh, uh, contact list so that you have it whenever. You know what? Your... I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Oh, well, that's too uh, sophisticated. There you go. But it's, it's always in the show notes. You can always grab it from there. And, uh, you know, make sure to uh, send us any of the feedback for this or any of the other shows, as we always say at the end of the show. And we've got uh, another randomized show coming up in about three weeks. So anything that doesn't fit into the upcoming shows can get jammed into that. And, you know, that's one of the reasons we like those randomized shows too much. And that's geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com. All right, we've got a show once again on batteries today. We've only covered this topic three times before. The last time was on 116, which is probably pretty much like what we're going to do today, just an update. But if you're really serious about it, go back to our first and second shows, the beta shows, because we got so in-depth on that that you're not going to understand what's going on, most likely. 
And and to make it worse, I was looking back at the show notes this week for those first shows and the uh, fuel cell stuff that we were talking about then doesn't seem to exist anymore. It's been That's packed up and went home. You know, I, I liked that idea, but at the same time for the fuel cells to work, you needed to carry other things with you. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the nice thing about the fuel cell was most of those fuel cells were uh, running on uh, some kind of uh, hydrogen uh, uh, derived from water. So you could use tap water with this little, you know, countertop device that would uh, uh, charge it, charge up the little fuel cell cartridges. Then you put them into the actual fuel cell. And that was the fuel that it used to actually generate the power. Well, didn't I see one running on like butane? Yeah, there were butane ones, but the trouble is the butane ones weren't safe for travel. So they kind of disappeared quickly. So uh, I, I thought that was a good idea at the time. It was, it was inventive. It was thinking outside the box, but apparently when the day comes to an end, you put the batteries back into the box. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think it's just one of those too complex a technology and they've been trying for fuel cells in cars since I was working with the uh, auto companies back in, you know, what was that? The uh, mid nineties. Yeah. And they've just never gotten it to the point where it's uh, viable for production. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I have the feeling it's the same kind of thing, just too complex, uh, not reliable enough uh, in some cases and just, and you're dealing with hydrogen. That's quite bold. Yeah. Well, the way that they were doing it, it's it wasn't a big problem because it was it wasn't just straight hydrogen, it was something with the water and then in the process of the fuel cell is where it actually separated it out or something. So it was very stable. Unlike me. And you know, large amounts of hydrogen that's never caused a problem in human no. history. No. No. No, that's, that's a beautiful thing. You always want to take them up in the, uh, you know, lots of hydrogen with you in your, in a plane because, you know, it helps to reduce the uh, uh, weight of the plane. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or a dirigible or whatever you may, you know, choose to fly that day. You're lighter than aircraft. Um, that, that was an issue in, uh, um, what was the Mars movie? The Martian? The Martian? I, I actually have not seen that. When he was making his potatoes. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go start with the uh, double and triple A batteries, uh, go back through some of the uh, technology behind those. Uh, and really for the disposable batteries, there's three technologies that you're going to find. The heavy duty, which is your zinc carbon or uh, zinc chloride cells. These are the ones you really don't want to use for anything. They're for like, your old fashioned flashlights, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. They're fine. The power on those is not nearly as good as the more common ones, which are the alkaline batteries. And those are what you find almost everywhere these days. It's your major brand names are these alkalines. They're your good standard disposable batteries, fairly inexpensive and kind of nasty to the environment. Well, it, and you, know, you go through a lot of, no, 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 none of these are good for the environment, but this, these are kind of especially nasty because they do contain in most cases, some mercury, although it, has that been completely phased out now? I have no idea. I know they contain an acid as well. Yeah. Well, that's the true. For almost everything tend to leak the most. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't last as long. So you go through more of them. I should, well, they don't last as long as the, rechargeable options we'll be talking about and the last of the disposable options, which is most people know from listening to the show are the lithiums that I tend to like because they have much better output. They last longer, they're stronger. They don't have the fall off of the alkalines. And ironically, they're also much lighter. Plus they have a much longer shelf life. An alkaline battery loses power like a lot of other types of batteries do, uh, as you leave it on the shelf. And after about uh, two, three years in the package, uh, you can expect 
only about half of what it actually had, if I remember correctly. Do you I want don't a have that. Lesson? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, these batteries use a reaction between the mercuric oxide and the zinc electrodes to produce an alkaline electrolyte. So yes, there's still mercury. It's a, it's a mercuric oxide in alkaline batteries. Yeah, but they were trying to get away from that, and there were some of the batteries that did. But I could be thinking of just the uh, lithiums, but uh, yeah, there, there was a push to try to get rid of the mercury. So, so I don't remember. Uh, Duracell and Energizer com- claims that their alkaline batteries can be thrown away in the normal garbage. Oh, okay. So they must have, uh, yeah, they must have gotten but, rid of most of the uh, mercury then. Well, or there's such a small amount. Yeah, um, yeah most uh, of. Rechargeable batteries should be recycled. Correct. And I, th- I think most uh, uh, municipalities, at least, uh, probably most, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Most government agencies around the world are probably going to ask you to recycle all of these just because there is potential in large quantities for nasty things to happen. So in our case, we have a bin at the local recycling center. You know, we just save up all of these batteries and take them down and dump them in in one fell swoop. And the lithium batteries, those you never want to throw away in the garbage because they are a uh, fire risk. Hmm. So they, they tell you not to throw them away. They don't have the same problems as like the alkalines or uh, like the NIMS do. However, because it's lithium, it will burn and burn hot if there's a fire or something and it becomes an issue. And like on planes, at this point, they tell you you may not check anything with a lithium battery, which includes the lithiums like I like Mm -hmm. uh, that are disposable. Plus, almost any of your electronics now are using a lithium-based battery. Some sort of lithium in your battery, right? So as far as shelf life, it goes in the order we, we mentioned them. Heavy duty has the shortest lifespan and shelf life. Alkaline fits right there in the middle. Lithium has the longest uh, usage and the longest shelf life. Right. Of and you're looking at the, battery. yeah, and for a lithium battery, you're looking at about 10 years, which is part of why I like these so much. I keep a pack of these in my uh, uh, travel bag. I keep a pack in the car I, you know i just have them in various locations so that whenever i need double a batteries i have them with me mm-hmm. and they're my spare batteries and they don't weigh as nearly as much as the uh, alkalines do but or as the rechargeables so these are all of those uh, disposable ones it's nice at least to have the pack of lithiums as a, a spare when you go out caching in case your rechargeables die and you know you, Presuming you actually have uh, devices that use AA batteries, if you're all cell phone and rechargeable flashlights, you know they're not going to do you any good. But the, if you have something that's going to take these AA batteries, keep a pack of those lithiums with you just in case as your emergency kit, mm-hmm. and you're going to be in really good shape should you, know, you need it on the trail. You pop them in, and they last for a very, very, very long time. Certainly it should be more than enough to get you back to the car. <laughs> yes, you better hope so. Yeah. If if it's longer than that, then you've got probably bigger problems. Uh, let's move on to some of the uh, rechargeable options for the uh, AA and AAA batteries. And uh, you want to start off with the uh, old standard that we all hate? Well, you know, it's been around so long. We all know... We can, we can hear the term NICAD and go, oh yeah, a NICAD's a battery. I know that it's nickel cadmium. Um, and it's been around, oh, long, long time. Yeah. I th- I'd have to check, but these are, uh, those batteries. I, th- I think you're probably going to find a lot of people who didn't, um, uh, uh, recognize these because they started losing popularity in the 1990s. Well, that's how old these are. Yeah. According to Wikipedia, it was first developed in uh, Sweden in 1899. 
And it was the big thing. This is the one that everyone knows where, you know, don't charge the battery until it's dead. It right. will, you know, th these are real heavy duty uh, batteries in that they can take the beating. They have a wide temperature range that they work in. And that becomes a problem with these rechargeables too, is they are sensitive to heat more than your uh, disposables will. Uh, though, we should mention that like the alkaline batteries are notorious for exploding if they get too hot. And right. I think it will have similar problems when it gets too cold. So all batteries, no matter what they are, are going to have thermal issues. But the uh, NICADs are great in a uh, wider range than our, your NIM batteries, which is what became the standard mm -hmm. in like the 90s on, where these are the ones that we're probably a little bit more used to where you have a little bit more flexibility in the charging. You don't have to wait till it's totally dead. You don't have to uh, do full power cycles on it, though you know, it's best to let them down all the way and charge them all the way back up because that does keep them working longer and better. Right. But the other problem with the NIMS and the nickel metal or the nickel cadmium also has it, but the nickel metal hydride is notorious for this uh, short shelf life. If you charge it up, it loses, depending on the battery, about 10% per week. Does that sound like the right number, uh, Chris? You know, it's not long. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. Um, Self-ditch charge rate is 13.9 to 70.6% at room temperature. Yeah, I mean, so that doesn't necessarily give you a time frame, but, you know, so, uh, you know, the self-discharge can be 5 to 20% on the first day and then around, you know, 1 to 4% each day after that. So, I mean, you know, you charge them up, you don't use them right away, you could lose 20% of your power right there. Right. And we've had this discussion more recently about the uh, batteries. And one of the reasons I like using the lithiums is I tend not to necessarily know when I'm going to go grab the GPS and head out. So I like the lithiums, mm -hmm. the uh, NIMS. If you're going to go charge them up and take them out that next day, they're great. You keep a bunch of them around. And these are big, heavy duty batteries. They're not going to give you the power that a lithium does, and they do way more, but you get to reuse them time after time after time. And depending on which batteries you get, some of them are actually rated for some insane, like 10,000 cycles. Exactly. And I've never have, had any last anywhere close to that long, though. They have the trickle charge, meaning that you can keep them, you know, topped off for an extended period of time without you know, damaging those, that number of charge cycles. Yeah. And, and keep in mind the quality of the charger is a big deal mm -hmm. with these rechargeable batteries. If you get cheap chargers, they're going to heat that battery up, which shortens the life of the battery. If you get the better quality chargers, there's usually an option of whether you want a slow charge or a rapid charge. Unless you really need to, you never want to use that rapid charge because mm -hmm. that does reduce the life of uh, any of these type of batteries. Exactly. You'll also get some of them that have a, um, um, they call them different things, but basically it's an exercise button where it, it takes the battery, charges it up, drains it all the way, and recharges. And that's to get rid of some of the memory that can develop. It's a good idea to do if you're not draining it all the way before you actually charge them. And that way you get to reset the battery and you can get a little bit more capacity out of it. Well, you can uh, get it back closer to its original capacity. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Cause you will lose some capacity over time with all in, of the rechargeables in, in any rechargeable, each charge cycle takes a little bit of the total capacity of the battery. It takes a right. small percentage. Right. Uh, of course, depending on the chemistry, it affects, you know, the lifespan of the battery. But uh, know that every time you charge these, you know, you are shortening the lifespan of the battery and its maximum charge. Now, you may not see that in several years, but in theory, it's there. 
Yeah, and then there is another type of NIM, which is going to be our third one. And this one, uh, I think it was developed by the uh, CIA during the 60s. What? Oh, yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> well, that's what it was distributed. Yes. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, LSD or LD is what I'm seeing more often because yeah, LSD it does have that connotation. So <laughs> it stands for a low self discharge nickel metal hydride. So it's the same basic battery, but what they do is they put little separators in the cell, and they found that that reduces the rate at which it discharges uh, on its own. So that lowers you know, the power rate. loss. Yeah. It means that these are more shelf stable. Exactly. You can charge these up. They'll last for weeks without losing as much power. You know, you can grab one of these things, uh, one of these LSD NIMS, you know, three weeks later, and it's still going to be uh, charged at something around uh, 60, 70%. It depends again on the battery. I, Whereas I, like your NIMS, your standard NIMS would be probably under 20%. Our friend Wikipedia says that the manufacturers claim that the cells, these batteries, uh, retain 70 to 85% of their capacity when stored one year at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. See, and that's not what I've found. I, I know that that's what they've claimed, but my experience, well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. When they're new, mm -hmm. they did last that long. But after, you know, about 100 charge cycles, they seem to uh, uh, discharge more rapidly on their own. So that, yeah. yeah and I apologize because I'm going through and trying to remember my experience with these. And right. I really haven't used them much in the last few years. And that's in large part because so much of what I've been doing has been on mobile devices now where I don't use the uh, uh the, you know, the rechargeable AA type batteries. Right. Now, for these uh, low self-discharge NIMS, you know, everybody knows the brand Eneloop. Yep. And, and that's the one that's really uh, come up and, and pushed this. There are others, of course. Uh, Monoprice, one of my favorite places, offers one as well. Uh, but, um, you know, these are marketed as ready-to-use or recharged, uh, rechargeable batteries. And you can find them on the shelf at a lot of the big box stores. So if you do need to grab some batteries, you can run in, grab these, uh, throw them in the, uh, GPSR and go. Mm -hmm. So Costco has a nice kit of them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Costco does. Uh, I don't know, uh, who has like a really good deal on them right now, but I've seen, uh, at like Woot and Amazon, they'll run the, uh, daily promo sometimes where you'll get, a beautiful kit of the uh, Eneloops with the charger and it's, you know, under $20, I think. I was going to say, typically the, the Costco one runs 25 to $30, I believe. Uh, well, it depends on which ones you're getting with the uh, kit too. Cause I've seen some of them where it even includes like uh, C's and D's with the better charger. And then you're getting closer to like the 80 to a hundred dollar mark, even on those uh, sales. The, these but, were all, uh, double A's, couple of triple A's, but they had the C's and D's, uh, 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 uh frames that you put the double A's into that would, oh, take yes. the space of the, yeah. the spacers. I don't know what you call them. Um, I call them a, a Savoy, but that's, that's different. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm finding now after about two years, I'm recharging these out of my remotes. You know, I'm finding my remotes are dying. And after the set I got, I'm like, oh, well, two years. That's that's pretty good. To give you an idea on the uh, lithiums and why I like them, uh, for the wedding, I lent a lot of my uh, photo equipment to uh, the guys who are doing the shooting for us, you know, who are friends of us, uh, are friends of ours. And the, uh, the uh, uh, strobes, the flashes, still had the uh, lithium batteries in them and they were still good. I haven't pulled that stuff out since before I moved. I'm thinking it's about seven years. Wow. And they ended up still using those batteries. That's why I really like using those lithiums. They cost a lot more, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but they last a really long time. They're lightweight. They didn't leak after, you know, six, seven years in the, uh, uh, cameras, you know, in the strobes and, you know, they lasted, they were still good after that much time. So my recommendation for a lot of people has been for your GPSR, for your uh, flashlights, use the lithium batteries, especially for that stuff that you're going to put in the car and just leave there. Like your flashlights, those lithium batteries are perfect. And Daryl, just to be, just to clarify, you're referring to a disposable lithium double A or CD cell, whatever size. Yeah, triple A's. Yeah. Yeah. Cause those lithium batteries do have a good shelf life. They have a long life when they are in use. So for those emergency things like the flashlights in the car, you can pretty much always count on them working and they're not as likely to leak as like the alkalines are. Mm -hmm. And if you went for like the uh, NIMS, chances that it's going to have discharged while it's sitting there are pretty good. Plus, you have to watch with the uh, rechargeable batteries because they're 1.2 volts, not 1.5 volts. And some of the flashlights will not operate correctly. You know, the LED chip requires full voltage. Most things at this point really don't care, especially because the NIMS have more amps. So it makes up for the lack of voltage with the amperage. So you still get the wattage out of it. And I just confused a lot of people, didn't I? (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's most electronics these days work on wattage, not necessarily voltage or amperage. They have some, uh, yeah, they have their own uh, self-regulating circuitry so that you can do whatever you want. Um, but by the way, Limax is saying he's only seen the lithiums and double A's. Uh, I have a bunch of triple A's that I use for the remote controls for that very reason. They don't leak. And I've had too many of the batteries that leak because I just, you know, even with the uh, uh, standard uh, uh, alkaline batteries, I'll have more times than not the battery leaks before it's totally dead. And I notice that it's dead. So I've just switched to lithiums because it makes it safer. And of course, I did try the NIMS in those and they didn't last very well. And I think it's because of that 1.2 volts. Yeah. They'll, well, they'll work for a couple of weeks and then they stop working right. Right. There, uh, Limax brings up, you know, wattage relies on voltage and amperage. That's exactly right. So it's, it's a simple uh, mathematical formula that says, you know, watts or watts equal volts times amps. So right. if you have less voltage, you're going to need more amperage for, uh, to, to get those, those watts that the device wants more amperage means shorter life. So if you have a higher voltage, you can run a little less amperage and extend the life of your battery. Yeah. So my recommendation though, is generally for people who don't expect to use the devices often, use the lithiums. If you're looking for something that's going to last a really long time, like, you know, my GPSR is I put a pack or a set of lithiums in and they'll last me all day. So if that's the kind of stuff that you're looking for, you don't want to carry a whole bunch of stuff or you need that weight savings, get the lithiums. Otherwise, you probably are going to be better off with one of the two options of the NIM batteries. If you can charge up the batteries just before you head out every time, then I would suggest the NIMs over the low self-discharge NIMs because they do have a little bit better capacity. You know, by putting those little uh, separators in there, you do restrict the maximum uh, output from those batteries. So the NIM batteries can be higher capacity than the low self-discharge NIM batteries. Now that doesn't mean that they actually are. You have to check the individual batteries Mm -hmm. because I've run into some NIM batteries that are ridiculously small. Like, uh, uh, you know, the AA batteries, a a NIM battery should be at least 2,500 milliamps. Wait, milliamps? Yes, milliamps. Um, Milliamp hours. Uh, I've run into some of them where it's only like 1,200. It's like, that's not even really a battery, guys. Just send it back to the factory. That That's an error. 
<laughs> yeah, but the low self-discharge NIMS, it's uh, not uncommon to find them in that 17 to 1800 range. Most of them now are going to be better than that. However, that's the kind of difference that you're looking at is by putting those little separators in, it's taking some of the space and you don't have everything to go. Okay, so we've talked about disposable and rechargeable. And for the most part, these are your standard battery sizes, double A, triple A, C, D, nine volt, what have you. Did you ever have a GPS that worked on nine volts? No, no. But smoke detectors and radios and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and the nice thing is with the nine volts, it's nine volts, whether it's the rechargeable or the uh, uh, disposable. So you don't have to worry about those. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about are, how do I want to phrase this, Daryl? More specialty batteries or specific usage batteries. Okay. We're talking about batteries for a cell phone or a rechargeable battery that comes with a GPSR? Well, the GPSRs are still typically your uh, NIM batteries if they're included. You know, they're, uh, some of the... Uh, well, I was thinking like... The, the built-in uh, ones on like the Nuvies. The, or, or the Montana. Doesn't the Montana come with a battery pack? Uh, the Montana's battery pack was, I thought, I could be wrong, uh, the double A's uh, NIMS just strapped together like they did with the uh, uh, 650s and the 750s. Okay. So you could be right, but I thought that was not. You might be thinking of, um, oh, the, the Android-based one, I think, had a uh, Lion battery. I, well, anyway, but... You know, this this specialized battery pack that isn't shaped like a normal round cylinder battery. Yeah. Yeah. And so these are like most of your camcorders are going to use uh, uh, some form of this. Almost every camera now uses some form of these. You know, it's phones, these. Yeah. It's cars. The dedicated battery packs. Well, cars. Yeah. yeah cars use the. Uh, cars are using lithium ion as well. Yeah. Not, not well. Yeah. For the uh, electric cars. Right, and for the, the hybrids. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, many, many of these devices, like say a Tesla uses a bunch of little um, lithium ion batteries, you know, uh, connected together. Well, and you know, one of the big reasons why they did that was to separate the uh, lithium ion batteries and reduce the risk of fire. Right. If you uh, people remember the 787, I think it was, had a series of uh, battery fires mm -hmm. in, in uh, yeah, well, it, it was in the front of the plane, wasn't it? It was in the avionics compartment. Oh, was it? I thought, yeah. okay. I thought they also had one in the, anyway, go ahead. Well, they also had them in the back of the plane, as I recall, but the one in the avionics compartment is the one that was melting down. And Tesla wanted to get involved with it and say, hey, we know how to fix this for you. And basically, my understanding is it's take those batteries and separate them because, you know, you get too many of them in there, you're going to have a higher risk. Because mm -hmm. as we mentioned before, lithiums are, lithium, anything is flammable. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we see Limax bringing up the Samsung Note 7. Yep. And with the exploding batteries. Now, Samsung didn't make those batteries. You know, they were uh, uh, another manufacturer that produced them, but they didn't have good quality standards. And that lithium, when it's overheated or when it's heated, becomes flammable. And uh, is it explosive? It's, it flammable, it's flammable, but it, it burns so hot that it can cause explosions. Um, but with the uh, um, Note 7 issues, there were actually two different problems. And not all of them, all, not all of them had problems, had both the problems. I think it was like one manufacturer had one problem and a different manufacturer had a different problem. One was uh, electrodes weren't uh, um, long enough or sh uh, something like that. And so it would overheat and catch on fire. And then the other one was the separator wasn't. Uh, done quite right if i remember and then the chemicals combined and combusted 
So many, many ways that these can go wrong, but they are at this point the best options we have for high power, high durability uh, batteries. So these are the Lions, which is a lithium ion, and then LiPo, which is a lithium ion polymer. And that's when you have too much ice cream. You get the LiPo at the end of the meal, right? Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> no oh that's so sad anyway uh <laughs> lithium polymer you'll find that in smaller devices typically they don't make the uh, lithium polymer in as large capacities because of uh you know reasons <laughs> they're much more uh, volatile harder to produce in um, bigger uh, sizes but they have some serious advantages. Like it's almost a uh, um, putty. So it's easily shaped and formed into nice small little batteries and it's very high power density. So these are what most cell phones are using now, especially right. those where it's built in. Exactly. Say the, well, most of the newer high-end cell phones are, have non-removable batteries, don't they? Yes, almost everyone has gone that route now, in part because if you have that uh, battery built in, you can have a little bit better uh, quality control on it, too. Right. Well, and yeah, you can produce it without a heavier case around it. You know, you, you don't need a big plastic case around it to provide stability for the battery because yeah, the double you... casing essentially right exactly yeah but the big thing is you can assure that no one's putting a third party battery in there and uh, way back when uh, nokia got really hit hard because with the s90 i think it was going back a long way there were a bunch of really really bad knockoff batteries coming out of china and one of the Nokia phones was accused of killing a guy in China. Oh, I remember with, that. He had right. it in his breast pocket yeah. and it exploded and sent shrapnel into his heart. Well, it turned out it was a knockoff battery in a knockoff phone. It wasn't even a genuine phone, but it was one of those, you know, it looks in, like a Nokia and everyone expected it to be one and, you know, they blamed him. So just one more case of that happening. And, you know, you've got a lot of quality control that needs to go into these or can be deadly. So, mm -hmm. you know, by uh, fixing that battery in there, it does reduce that load. Originally, though, it was about getting more power into the phone without increasing the size. You know, you like can, Tim, the tool man, Taylor, always yeah. got more power into things. But it, it's just really, you know, if you can pack in that little extra battery that would normally go into the casings and the removable housing and all that stuff, you know, that's going to be that much more power. And I was not a fan of doing that. I was very, I don't want to say angry, but disappointed when we started seeing that happen. But I realized in very short order, I actually prefer having that battery in there and having like the external battery cases because I can swap those out and I never have to power cycle the phone. That's true. That's true. Um, but, you know, with these lithium ions, we're finding a lot of those in now what, what I call a USB battery, a battery that has a USB connection to be able to charge your devices, be it a phone, be it a GPS, what have you, uh, quickly and easily. And of course they come in, you know, a multitude of sizes. Well, and you were talking about the cars and there is a bunch of the uh, lithium ion external battery packs like that with the USB ports, but that will also even jumpstart your car. Yes, that's true. That's true. And uh, that's becoming more and more common in part because the lithium batteries have gotten better and cheaper. 
Now, cars, typically what you're used to is your car battery is that lead-acid battery, which is also like your motorcycle batteries are the same thing. Golf cart. These are, yeah, these are not ones that you want to be carrying around with you. However, you people do. It's, it's a great workout. Yeah. But you know, one, carry, of the, uh, carry one of the... Carry a pound lead-acid batteries, you go geocaching. One of the famous things for the uh, uh, guys that used to do electronic news gathering was they had belts with little motorcycle batteries just to power the lights. Right. People actually do carry them, but I've heard of people taking the little motorcycle batteries and uh, building their own slings and uh, put an inverter on it and charge, you know, 20 uh, 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 phones off of it. Some of the events mm -hmm. seems kind of ridiculous, but yeah. It's However, kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I, I went out, uh, it was actually Munzine with a fellow who, uh, his phone was dying and he's carrying around this, uh, bag over his shoulder. And I go, well, that looks heavy. What's in there? And he goes, oh, I've got my motorcycle battery in there. And he had done just that hooked up a, a cell phone charger to that, to be able to charge his thing. And I showed him my, you know, mono price battery. I said, you need one of these. He goes, oh, what? Yeah, I mean, the size and everything of these batteries is getting pretty insane. You know, I've got this uh, tiny little 10,000 milliamp hour battery that, you know, does two uh, tablets, the 2.1 amp, uh, and I think it actually does like 2.4 amps uh, per port. No, it's only 2.1. But this thing is tiny and it doesn't weigh uh, all that much. This weighs less than the batteries I got. Uh, three four years ago that were only 5,000 milliamp hours right so more than double and you know like about the same size as uh, uh, those were and a lot lighter and stay charged on a shelf for weeks and weeks without a problem oh yeah well and you can get some really cool things in these external batteries uh, there's a bunch of them that will have flashlights. Uh, you can get speakers, you know, Bluetooth speakers that have the uh, charge ports. So you can uh, do, uh, you know, your tunes on the beach and charge up your phone while you're sitting there. Doesn't do much for uh, geocachers. But what's more interesting is there are some flashlights built into some of these. They, they don't seem to be making as many of those now as they used to. I had one that I really liked that, uh, what was it, Geo Woodstock 12 that we were at in St. Louis? Mm, that seems right. Yeah. We had a, I had two different versions of them. One was like your little uh, lipstick container, but it had the, you know, and there's a ton of those out there, but it had a little flashlight at the end. So I could turn it on and it was a nice bright LED flashlight that we used to walk home. And then I had another one, uh, well, to the hotel. Then I had another one that was a cool little lantern. And, you know, it's just nice to have that multifunction thing. Mm -hmm. Now I've got a nice one for, uh, like, power outages that's actually like a lamp. Uh, not a, uh, That's not the right term, but more like a light fixture. And it's got the magnetic uh, uh, connection on the one side, so you can, like, slap it on the uh, uh, shower bar mm -hmm. and take your showers and have some light. And it's... Fairly low power, lasts a long time, and the thing has a huge battery in it. So you can charge up a couple of uh, phones or whatever, and it's a great idea to have that kind of stuff just sitting around the house for when there is a power outage or something like that. Exactly. And in the car, those can be handy too. However, the problem with any of these is, you know, at least once a month, you probably want to plug them in and charge them up. Mm -hmm. Um in the uh, chat there bounce bounce says he he harnesses his dog to carry his batteries for him now i've seen a picture of bounce bounce's dog you can ride that dog wherever you need to go that's a, that's a large animal yeah people don't realize how little weight dogs can actually carry <laughs> it's one of the reasons why you don't see them carrying a bunch of stuff for people most of the time they're so, not animals yeah don't don't be trying to put a lead acid battery on your uh, schnauzer or anything. <laughs> oh, jumpstart your dog. Woo. And off he goes. 
<laughs> All right. What what did you have there, Daryl? Th- this is actually that uh, lamp one that I was talking about. Okay. That's great for uh, uh, power failures and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So this is, uh, you know, just one of those cool little things that I found on uh, Amazon on a uh, deal of the day. And I really like having this. It's, uh, uh, I'm trying to look for it. See, it doesn't want to tell me right now. <laughs> uh, just today, uh, one of the companies I follow is Goal Zero. They produce some very nice uh, battery operated uh, lights and uh, along with solar charging, what have you. They just released a new one today, uh, or I just heard about it today that is fully USB. You charge it with USB and it also has a USB port on the front of it to, uh, be able to charge your phone. But I figured if you plug the light back into that USB port, wouldn't it run forever? No. Oh. This is 4,400 milliamp hours, by the way, not as big as I thought it was, but you know, it's, it served me very well through some power failures. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, one of the things to note is there are multiple standards for USB charging at this point. Mm-hmm. So if you are looking for a quick charge, make sure to get the right type of battery or charger for that matter for your device. That's uh, very true. Don't want to get into that too much here, but there's also now the USB C. Mm-hmm. That is really, really cool. I know most people hate it because it's another set of cables and you have to go and replace everything. It's something you're not used to. Trust me, I get it because I got a lot of cables to replace. <laughs> but that USB C is so awesome because once everything goes to that, it's one cable that's going to work for everything and it doesn't matter. You can transfer power both ways. So you plug in a, uh, a battery to a phone, it's going to charge up that phone. If you plug that uh, battery through the same port into the wall outlet, you know, the charger, it's going to charge the phone or the charge the uh, battery. Mm-hmm. So it knows from the uh, uh, system in the USB C which way to do what. And it goes a lot further than just power, of course. But uh, really, really cool stuff with that USB-C. And USB-C, as part of its standard, allows for more power than does our standard old USB A and B connector. Yeah. Now, it has a much higher amperage. And in fact, you should, if you get uh, one of these lithium ion cells like you were holding up there, Daryl, often they come with multiple ports. You know, they'll, they have a one amp port and a two amp port or a 2.4 amp port, you know, look at your device, get, get to know the specs of it. You know, most devices can charge with a 2.1, 2.4 amp charge nowadays, but some of the older devices can't support that and they have to use the, the one amp. Yeah. And they'll usually jump down in uh, uh, amperage if needed. You can't go up, but you can always go down. Uh, one of the other things that I like is uh, IQ or smart on the uh, uh, batteries or chargers. And that just basically means it's going to pay attention to what the phone is doing or the tablet is doing when it's plugged in and scale the power accordingly and even uh, change the rapid charge uh, specs. It can't do it for the uh, quick charge, but for the older, uh, more rapid charging. And typically, if you have a tablet, it's going to want that 2 amp. But the phones usually, uh, until about two years ago, were going to be 1 amp at most. Now your phones are almost all doing 2.1 amps. Yeah, or even 2.4, you know, some of the big screen phones. Yeah, yeah. And with the uh, USB-C, you're getting a lot more. I want to I want to say, and I should have brought this up, or I pulled this up, but I don't I want to say it handy. I want to say it was actually five, not 10. Yeah, I think it was 10 amps was its uh, uh, max, but I want to say there was even something where it can shift to a, a, a 12 volt on in some cases if everything supports it. Because I think that's what the uh, laptops are actually doing. That's something we'll have to look into and Let's see. Bring up on a different uh, show. I pulled up the standards, so that doesn't necessarily tell me what I want to know. Okay, 
That should have it because that's what I'm talking yeah. about is in the standard. Um, the default power can do two point uh, USB three point one, which is USB C type, can do four point five watts. Okay, it's five volts and point nine amps. Where uh, USB one can do two point five, USB two can do two point five. Okay, so maybe there's a, a USB-C charge standard that's on top of that. Because it sounds like that's lower than what I've been hearing. Well, there's a maximum 5 amp. And, and well, I'm, 5 amp is I, good, too. Yeah, I apologize. I pulled up uh, the specs, and it's, you know, not an easy read. <laughs> no, definitely not. So in any case, yeah, it, the whole point of USB-C for phones and batteries is much faster charging, much more rapid transfers, you know, good, good things for us, despite having to go and change out all those cables. Exactly. And you mentioned cables. Make sure you have good cables to charge your phone and charge your devices if you're uh, charging up those batteries. Don't use a cable with... Uh, damaged connector or damaged cable at all just get rid of that get a new cable you're going to be better off with your devices are going to last longer yeah and you will find sometimes that the cable affects your charge rate too mm -hmm. so if you have a cable that is not charging at full speed i always recommend getting rid of that cable because chances are there's something wrong with that cable right and if there's and not they, better yeah. be safe than sorry yeah, and it may not be a good quality cable that's designed to handle that kind of uh, power through it. So, absolutely, you never know. All right, we've gone on probably a lot longer than anyone thought we could go on about batteries. But so why don't we? Uh, it's because uh, we're very excited and charged. Yeah, that's it. It's 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 what I got. <laughs> hey, it's a geeky topic. We're geeks, and you know what can we say? So once again, congrats to. Uh, yeah, sorry. Don't remember how to pronounce that. Uh, so let's do this again. Lankia. Okay. Congrats to Lankia. Lankia, sorry. Uh, for winning that Captain Rosny's hat. And remember that you might be able to get one of those next week if you send us in some feedback for that uh, traveler show. But before we get into the schedule for the upcoming weeks, thanks to everyone who's been sharing these shows with your friends and on social media. That really helps us grow the audience, and we'd love to get uh, some of these tips and tricks out to people. So any of the uh, shows that have good information, please share the links on social media. Let your friends know at the events, and uh, let them know how much fun, well, maybe not fun, but how much information you get out of the Geo Gearheads. We really appreciate it. And look at all the information you got just on batteries tonight. Now, if you like that, Next week, we're going to talk about travelers, meaning geocaching travelers. But I would like to talk about time travelers as well. No? Okay, we're not going to talk about time no. travelers. But traveling a little forward in time to November 23rd, we are going to talk about geocaching Australia. The week after that is going to be another one of our infamous, yes, infamous, that's beyond famous, randomized shows. And December 7th, the first week of December, we're going to talk about Munzee and more. Check the Cashamaniacs website at cashamaniacs.com for more on the Geo Gearheads, including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cashamaniacs shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on our website to support the Cashamaniacs shows. Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Suffiner and Daryl Wandberg. This show is copyright 2017 by Daryl Wandberg. All rights reserved. Cash with a cash of media.